it, it bridges the gap between the the battle of Manticore, the attack on Manticore by the Volsung mercenaries working for the the uh, the nasty Terran base Transteller mm-hmm. who knows figures out that there's a, a wormhole out there somewhere. Uh, and to write on the right on the doorstep of the man, of the Mantis beginning to figure out why this is happening. They don't get there in, in, in this book. Okay. Um, but, um, covers, gosh, a couple, three years, I guess, because of all the travel time and whatnot involved. Travis is turning into, um, well, he's been from the beginning, uh, a, a very interesting character. In many ways, he's going to be a lot more Horatio Hornblower than Honor Harrington was. And the reason I say that is, first, he's a lot more neurotic than Honor (laughs) is. And anybody who's read the Hornblower novels knows that Hornblower's a pretty neurotic fellow. Um, But the other side of it is that because Forster was writing historical novels, he had to find places he could put Hornblower where Hornblower could do critically important things that never turned up in the history books. Okay. All right. And that's kind of what's going on with Travis. Uh, he's going to be kind of the uh, forgotten hero. So Travis is, is um, from the storyteller's perspective, the universe builder storyteller's perspective, Travis is going to be one of our, one of our periscopes into what's going on outside Star Kingdom with the Andermani and whatnot at this time, because he's going to be out doing intelligence work and that kind of thing. And we'll have a chance to see a lot of that stuff. Okay. Um, but he's also... He's, he's a very interesting character to me, <clears throat> because he is... He is gifted in his own way. He's incredibly brilliant, <clears throat> and he's a rules mechanic. Okay, he needs that structure mm-hmm. badly. Honor had a very nurturing childhood. Travis had the opposite. Okay. Okay. So Honor is very centered. Okay, um, except for a couple of areas that have to do with Pavel Young and with her, 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 her belief. You know, I mean, she's got this drop dead gorgeous mother and she spends like 30 years being a gawky 18 year old, 16 year old Mm -hmm. kind of thing. You know, (laughs) what can I say? There's a downside to everything. Um, but see what makes third generation sidetrack here, what makes third generation prolong possible is they have to come up with a technique for the brain to go right on maturing and so forth, even while the rest of the body doesn't. Okay. Because otherwise you are permanently 16 years old with God who would want to be 16 for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and so they had to come up with, with, um, with, um, uh, uh, for want of a better term, uh, mods. That that uh, that are ongoing treatments to make sure that hormones and everything are where they need mm-hmm. to be and everything else. Um, and until they cracked that, second generation prolong was the best they could do, and which is why Hamish, who was first generation prolong, um, he's like um, forty five years older than Honor, which is not much when you're talking about people are going to live three hundred years. But he looks like he's in his forties. Whereas Honor looks like she's in her early 30s. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Travis, of course, predates mm-hmm. all of this. But the, the, the point was that it is the amount of time that Honor spent hung up in a way in, in that physical development stage that had so much to do with her self-image of herself as being this gawky, horse-like, huge... I mean, her mother is a foot and a half shorter than she is. Her mother is, you know, beautiful. Her mother is, you know, everything that mm-hmm. honors not. 
And then on top of that, you pile Pavel Young and what happened to her at the Academy. Mm-hmm. So there are there were areas of honor when we meet her, which are scarred, specifically those areas. Okay. But aside from that, okay, she's never been, she's never needed structure. She's always had it. And she has limits. Mm-hmm. Okay. Travis desperately needs structure because of the nightmare of a mother that he had. And he doesn't have a tree cat. Okay. So Travis is fighting a much harder battle internally than Honor did. Okay. Okay. Honor has to contend primarily with external foes, including ones like Pavel Young, who are inside her defenses because of what happened to her earlier. But she's not fighting herself. Okay. Except I would argue that she is to some extent in. Um, the interval between um, Field of Dishonor and Flag in Exile, where she has a complete collapse. Mm-hmm. I mean, she just loses it. I don't know how many people have realized that we're talking about a complete nervous collapse, in effect, despite Nimitz and everything else, after after Paul Tankersley's death and mm-hmm. the duel and everything else. <clears throat> and she comes out of it stronger. But, I mean, that's really what happens to her there. Travis's life is an ongoing train wreck, until he hits the Navy. Okay. Okay. And so the Navy is critical to him in terms of who he is, what he is. It gives his life purpose. It gives his life meaning. It gives his life structure. Okay. And then he meets Lisa and some of the other, you know, uh, people like Chomps and whatnot. But I mean, look at his relationship with Chomps. I mean, he's like, I don't know, you know, and then he's like, Oh, it's going to turn me in. And like, well, it's not really appropriate for him to be talking to an officer that way. I mean, <laughs> Travis is just adorable in that respect. He's he's got like all these all these little hangups in there because it's got to be this way. And then when the when when the when the, when it the fecal matter hits the rotary air impeller, okay, he's the one who's thinking outside the box to come up with the <laughs> solution. I, I love him, um, and um, and it it and and this is. One of the reasons why I wanted Tim to write these books, because he is so different from Honor. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and and I just, I love looking at the Honor verse through Travis's eyes. <laughs> it's a whole different place <laughs> from where Honor is. So. And it is. It's like, it's like three, four hundred years earlier. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, Travis's Star Kingdom of Manticore is Denmark. Or maybe even Iceland, okay. Whereas Honors is the British Empire at its height on steroids, <laughs> okay. Um, so it's it's um, the the window into the history and the early development. That's why it's the Star Kingdom Ascendant, mm-hmm. Manticore Ascendant, is because it's Manticore ascending from being Iceland with the discovery of the wormhole and everything else. Okay. And we'd really like to use Travis as our viewpoint to get all the way through the discovery of the wormhole, the treaties with Beowulf, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but we're going to have to look at the the calendar for how far we realistically can go with him in that entire process. We can find enough things to keep him busy, no matter what. But, you know, fitting him into the overall established timeline... Right. Uh, maybe a little a little trickier. 